So I read the book Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library when I was in third grade. That year, which was the 2014 to 2015 school year, it was listed on Florida Sunshine State Books, which is basically a list of usually 15, that, that year it was 10, but usually 15 books that are recommended to elementary school kids. It was a really good book, and I actually saw myself rereading it in the sixth grade, and apparently a Nickelodeon made a movie. I should say, I knew it would suck before watching the film since Nickelodeon made it. I'm going to be judging why it sucked as a standalone film um, in, like, you know, in next week's episode, but here I'm going to be talking about the inaccurate bits that I noticed. Some of these will be hyper-specific, and a large chunk of this movie is actually just summed up in a sentence. Anyways, let's go. So, in the opening scene... Um, in the book, Kyle and his brothers were playing the scavenger hunt game within their own house. They were not playing near the shops. And Kyle actually got grounded because he jumped through the rose bush in the yard and he broke the window to get into the basement. He did not break the window of their parents' auto mechanic shop. If anything, the occupation of the parents was actually unknown in the book. There was no mention of an auto mechanic shop anywhere. Also, Kyle in the book was actually a fan of Lemoncello's video games, but in the movie he does claim he isn't much of a video games person. I don't understand the point of just having him say that, like, there's just no point at all, since it isn't even like that, um, like, you know, him saying that he is a fan of Lemoncello's video games and stuff as well. If anything, look, what, in the book when he says that he's a fan of Lemoncello's video games, it just adds more to his character that he's a huge fan of Lemoncello. In the book, uh, or in the movie, when he just says that he is not too much into video games, um, that just, that's just like, well, what's the point of saying that? Like, because it's not even specified if Lemoncello makes video games. Another thing, in the book, they don't just have some random drone with a hologram flying into the class um, and announcing the essay competition. See, the hologram of Mrs. Tobin is not introduced until later on in the book when they're actually in the library. Also, Kyle blows the essay and he just writes two sentences about balloons on the bus because he completely forgot about the fact that there, were, um, there was an essay competition. In the movie, he is seen randomly drawing pictures and stuff because he couldn't think of anything. That's not how it came, that's not how it was. Another thing, Mrs. Tobin, she actually has a 60s haircut and cat eye glasses, although in the hologram of her did look pretty similar to how I did imagine her to be. Um, not completely accurate, but very similar. Um, Haley Davey, she was in fact the popular girl, uh, but in the book she had blonde hair and blue eyes. Very minor detail, but she doesn't really fit the description. Another thing, she was way more subtle about her popularity, like she was not over-exaggerated in the book. Also, Akimi Hughes didn't completely match the uh, description since she had jet black hair and freckles in the book, and I'm pretty sure she was half Asian, half Irish. Again, minor detail that I don't care about too much, but this video is counting every inaccurate detail in the movie. So, the winners for the essay contest, they're actually announced in the school's auditorium. They're not, uh, like, unlike the movie where they're announced directly outside of the library. Because they need to go home and then get permission from their parents to attend the lock-in. And the lock-in takes place a few days later. The lock-in, that's like the uh, actual, like, you know, game and all that. Another thing, this actually makes, uh, the fact that they need to get permission from their parents, this makes everything way more accurate. Because, um... Like, this just makes the entire, or like, it made the book more accurate, since that's just how, like, that's how things work. You need permission slips. Another thing, Kyle ended up getting grounded, so he had to get permission from his parents and all that, and, you know, his parents were proud of it. Like, what was the point of getting him grounded for that? I'm just saying. Um, so Dr. Zinchenko, in the book, she actually had a slight Russian accent. She had red hair, and her glasses were red in the book, although she did look pretty similar to how I imagined her to be in the movie. Not completely the same, but very similar. She was there with Levincello when he announced the winners. Another thing, the library cards do not actually have a ham button. I wrote the script a few weeks ago, so I don't even remember what the ham button does, but they did not have like any special buttons. It was just a normal library card. Another thing, they, re they receive their library cards when the winners are announced, not when they're already in the library. So you can say like, you know, a few days before the library lock-in that they get their library cards. Another thing, there's no, there's, they don't have a golden key that controls uh, the books and exhibits and stuff. See, the golden key in the book is actually just the key to the private bedroom. That's it. The movie doesn't even have a private bedroom. And there was actually a competition to be able to sleep in the private bedroom, which uh, Charles ended up winning. Another thing, the book is actually more of a, it's more futuristic and sci-fi than, ha like, featuring magic. It doesn't have magic in it. Because the book has stuff like holograms and stuff. Like, it has technology that's ahead of its time that doesn't exist yet. It's, there's no magic in the book. Um, weirdly, though, this was actually also set in the era of Nintendo DS's, PSP's, 
the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. Like, I'm pretty sure that was the 7th gen consoles, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, so older consoles, but it also was showcasing technology that didn't exist yet. Also, the book, I just realized, the that era was not too long ago, because it was literally, like... Because we have to remember that the Xbox One and PS4, they came out in 2013, so it was not that long ago, but it does feature some ahead of its time technology, I just realized that. Another thing, before the main escape starts, there are supposed to be two games before then. One of the, uh, the first game is to be able to sleep in the VIP suite, which Charles wins, and the second is to unlock the Electronic Learning Center. That's all in the book. Also, again, we're still talking about the book, uh, they sleep at 3 a.m. and the games start when they wake up. The games do not start 15 minutes after going into the library. Also, apparently in the movie, two kids back out before it starts, and in the book, three kids back out for reasons. In the book, everyone's phones were actually confiscated before the game started because they were not allowed to contact people outside the library. So it doesn't make sense for Haley to have her phone. Um, uh, like Haley shouldn't be having her phone in the movie. Well, what's weird is that like she was like you know seen filming and everything. I mean, who knows? She could have literally just been like I don't know streaming on like Twitch or Insta or Facebook or something like that. Like that's still contacting the outside world. It wouldn't really. It, it would still be considered even in the movie. It would be considered cheating for her to be contacting the outside world, so it doesn't make any sense. Okay, so in the book, the first thing that happens when the game starts is that Yasmin actually tries the emergency escape doors and she gets eliminated. Everyone else ends up going their own ways, and then Kyle and Akimi end up teaming up. In the movie, everyone ends up facing the challenge at the same time, and apparently they're all working together. It is very weird when that's happening, because then the teams end up forming, and it's just like, what's the point of having the teams? Granted, they do end up splitting up later on, but like, yeah. So about Yasmin's elimination in the movie, she actually wanted to just go to the toilet and Charles points her in the direction of the emergency doors, which, you know, she just gets tricked. But in the book, she wasn't paying attention when the directions were given, and she tries the emergency doors as an escape. Another thing in the book, Sierra Russell is just reading um, something at the start of the game, but in the movie, she's actively participating. Another thing, originally, Akimi is the one that offers to team up uh, to team up with Kyle, but it's reversed in the movie. Another thing, Charles does not end up partnering up with Andrew or Haley until way later in the book. They do not create their teams at the same time, and Kyle and Akimi are not even around when Charles makes his team. All right, so I'm just gonna play some shots of the exhibits right here. This is probably to replace the electronic learning center in the book. The ELC was sort of kind of like an arcade, being able to experience things like a moment in history or something out of a storybook or something like that. And there were arcade machine-like things, like VR and like you know that type of stuff, holograms, projections, all that. It's a little bit hard to explain, but just read this quote on the screen. So in the movie, uh, they actually have like an entire set to experience, and apparently there are actual people in the sets, and um, apparently they also almost die a few times. That does not happen in the book. There are probably OSHA violations and acts of child abuse that happened in the movie. Another thing, um, like, it's just weird. Like, it's originally a puzzle, but then somehow they all uh, end up being overtaken by the mythical storybook creatures and all that. It's just weird. Like, I don't know, Nickelodeon just couldn't think of anything, I guess. Okay, so what I'm about to say right here, I'm going to be summarizing a large portion of this movie in this one bullet point. The challenges were nothing like the challenges in the book. And again, people don't almost die. There's nothing remotely dangerous in the book. Lemoncello and Zinchenko do not need to break into the library and make sure no one dies. Also, what the hell is the shot? This is not how people are eliminated. Like, do you have any idea how much how many OSHA violations this probably is? Even if that just looks risky, you can't put you can't have kids near that. Like, come on. Um so in the book Haley does not get eliminated at all. She ends up joining Kyle's team and they win. The same thing goes for Miguel. Uh, Miguel was also given, like, he was also eliminated early on. Andrew is actually eliminated for stealing Sierra's library card in the book, even though Charles bullied him into doing that. Speaking of Charles, he does not get a redemption arc. Um, in the book, at least, he does not get a redemption arc. He gets eliminated near the end because he was caught playing dirty. Uh, just pause the screen to, to read this segment of the book. Yellow is Lamentello's lines. So, in the end, Haley is the first to get out of the exit, and the first thing she's supposed to be doing is communicating with the crowd and praising her team. Obviously, that does not happen in the movie since they decided to eliminate her early on. 
So, I just feel like Charles could have been seen sucking up to the staff more often. Sierra could have just been seen distracted, like, reading in more shots. And Miguel could have been way more, um, like, kind of enthusiastic about reading and all that. Um, well, like, you know, when he was talking to, th- to his peers. And basically, just the characters need to be more realistic. Haley was a bit more subtle about her popularity in the book, and she was not a wannabe cool kid. And while Kyle was a bit off in the movie. About Haley, she was actually made out to be a dumb blonde for the majority of the book until she joins Kyle's team and is seen solving puzzles and helping them out big time. The reason this happens in the book is to break the dumb blonde stereotype. I feel like Nickelodeon should have gotten this bit right at least, since the movie is clearly advertised to kids. Basically, by breaking the dumb blonde stereotype, this teaches kids about how stereotypes are not always true and to not judge a book by its cover. That's very important to teach kids, since I just feel like the dumb blonde character is overused so many times. Just, you know, in movies, books, and TV shows. To be honest, I was literally just finding so many things wrong with this movie the first time I watched it, and it really just ripped off of one of the most creative children's books I read as a third grader. This film did not do the book justice. This is movie analysis, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. And now for a failed recording. In the book, there's not just some random drone with a hologram, uh, Holog- oh my god, sorry. I tried to say ho- I- Okay, this is going in the blooper reel, okay? I tried to say holog- um, hologram, but I was thinking about Star Wars, and I said holocron, and then that merged with hologram, whatever. Yeah, this is going in the blooper reel. Thank y'all so much for watching, and be sure to subscribe to me on YouTube and Twitch.